Jewish holidays they pack on vacation, Congress holidays, Congress members in their districts doing public events, being asked, why should we get in a war on the side of Al-Qaeda? I thought you said they were the devil for the past 10 years. Uh, the uh, public in Britain so outraged they got the House of Commons to turn against a prime minister's war proposal for the first time since Yorktown. Uh, and a decade, a decade of the Iraq war first having been made illegal at the United Nations and then having been denounced as a criminal enterprise by endless events just like this one and all other sorts so that it became such a badge of shame that in 2012, if you voted for it, you couldn't win a primary. You had to wait at least four years to maybe win a primary when people started to forget about the Iraq war laws. Uh, and, uh, you know, the quick which you had sold to the public along with the White House. Uh, and, and so 2013, the director of the CIA goes into the president and quoting his predecessor, George Tenet, from Downing Street Memo Days, who had said the Iraq war weapons of mass destruction is a slam dunk said, Mr. President, the, what you're selling on the chemical weapons attack in Syria is not a slam dunk. Uh, and when the public put in more disruption of congressional town halls and more phone calls and emails into Congress and more of everything than ever before on any issue, banker bailout included, uh, and Congress made clear they were turning against this, uh, despite Raytheon stock being higher than it will ever be again and ever was before, and, Every media outlet and both big political parties in the White House and the Secretary of State and so forth saying we got to bomb Syria. The public said, no, you can't. And the president, according to himself in the Atlantic magazine recently, admitted the last thing they ever want to admit, which is that the public was a huge part in him reversing the decision that he had formally made uh, and promised to the John McCain's of Washington to, to bomb the hell out of Syria. Now. And they then subsequently made other decisions because once you haven't done the, the, you know, the last resort of stupid, irrational mass murder, they just do any of the thousand and one other options that are always available as other resorts. So they picked up, let's take the chemical weapons out of Syria, which was you know, lying on the table for years and so forth. They didn't pick up a dozen other useful things they could have done, and they did incredibly de destructive things that made uh, the situation worse, arming and training proxies. The Pentagon arming and training troops to fight against uh, the, pet, the, the CIA's armed and trained troops, and you know, all sorts of madness and destruction. Uh, but they didn't bomb Syria, which Hillary says to this day the president was wrong not to have done, which probably would have put ISIS in control of the entire country. Uh, they didn't do that because the public recognized that's a lie, and because it was very similar to the still remembered. Iraq war lies. Other lies, the next year, 2014, you get videos of white people killed with knives, and you, Mr. President, any war you want, take the opposite side of where we had the moral obligation to be in the war last year. Get in on both sides, do whatever you want, you know, white people got killed with knives. So there, there's, there's a, a factor of fear that really impedes our ability to resist war lies. Uh, but this is, this is why I wrote a book that is a guide to prepare people to spot lies about wars more quickly and not wait for memos to come out and minutes to be leaked and Freedom of Information Act requests to be answered. But when the United States is bombing the coast of some distant land and you're told that one of their ships fired a missile back at a U.S. ship, you're, you know enough to say that was actually not an attack on the United States. I don't care whether it really happened or didn't. When the president says we must bomb Baghdad because they have weapons, every single one of which the United States openly admitted to having vast stockpiles of itself, you can say I don't care if that's true or not, it doesn't justify bombing anybody's house. When the U.S. media says Russia just flew a plane near a U.S. plane, in the Baltic Sea, you don't look up, you know, Putin's relationship to Hitler, maybe they're really related. You get a globe and look for the Baltic Sea and see which coast of the United States it's off of. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, they are always telling you lies, but they're also always answering the wrong question in the first place. Right? So to be able to spot that and say, no, 
We stop that war, we stop that war, we stop this war, we stop every war. Because we don't need any of them. This, this is what the book is, is supposed to facilitate. Thank you. Um, I have a policy, it's a personal policy. Anytime a U.S. official, spokesperson, politician says anything, I 100% believe it's a lie. <laughs> and so, until I find out otherwise. I don't presume they're telling the truth, but I always presume they're telling a lie. I think it's a good policy, and it's words to live by. Um, so, last night we were in Berkeley, and we talked about the media. We talked about mostly Hollywood, and how Hollywood um, is involved in war propaganda, always. Um, you know, they always have uh, Pentagon or CIA officials on staff. Um, well, not always when they're making a pro-war movie. So, or, or supposedly, you know, telling the story of something that supposedly actually happened. So, but last night or this morning, since then, David watched a uh, piece on uh, NBC. Dateline? Dateline, NBC. So immediately, if I was me, I would immediately think if, if NBC has something on, it's a lie. I, I forgot to mention corporate media. I think if corporate media says anything, I 100% presume that they're lying until I find out otherwise. So, um, and it was about drones. It was about the use of um, unmanned aerial vehicles. Not that we're in favor of bombing for manned aerial vehicles, but it seems like unmanned aerial vehicles have um, certainly been a focus of um, activism since Obama became president. But um, David wanted to talk a little bit about this, uh, <laughs> this so-called news thing that was on last night. Yeah, I, I mentioned this to Cindy driving down here, and I wrote an article about it early this morning that's at davidswanson.org and other websites. Said, Did anybody watch Dateline NBC yesterday? Good. You are good people. <laughs> and do not do so. Uh, he I, watches I, it so you don't have to. I, you know, I, I do not watch television. I do not have television. I recommend, if you have one, throwing it out some window. Uh, but. Uh, but uh, I, I knew that some people I know were going to be on, and I thought there was some slight chance it was going to be good. And I thought, even if it's horrible, but they have my friends on, I want to see exactly how it's horrible. Um, and so uh, there, there's a woman named Jessalyn Raddick, who's a whistleblower from the Justice Department, who's now a lawyer for a lot of whistleblowers. Uh, and, uh, you know, many you've heard of and others. And she was on with three former participants in the drone murder program, uh, a former pilot, meaning a guy who dresses up as a pilot and sits at a desk and, and a guy who built some of the technology in Afghanistan. And uh, a woman I, I don't actually know, and I don't know exactly what her role was, but uh, the three of them uh, were on, uh, and I hoped for good things. They, they have a wonderful message I've had. Uh, the one young man, Sean Westmoreland, on my radio show, uh, they, they, they are speaking at public events. You should invite them here. Two of them spoke yesterday, no, two days ago in the evening in San Francisco at the Veterans Building on a GI Rights Hotline event. Uh, and, uh, you know, they got, they got about 12 seconds, maybe, uh, in this fairly lengthy report. Uh, that featured above and beyond anything else the commentary of John Brennan, uh, that featured wonderful hyping of the technology and beautiful photos of the exciting technology of the drone machines and what they can do. Uh, they, there was a sort of a pseudo-critic from some pseudo-think tank uh, that when, uh, you know, when there would be anything remotely negative about the drone killing program said they would either show footage of Obama, you know, disputing that, or Brennan disputing that, or both, or you know, three people disputing that, and then so they, they, you know, that the most interesting bit in the whole thing was, you know, they finally got around to, you know, have, have any civilians been killed by any chance, you know, and uh, and. 
they have, you know, they have, they say, you know, international human, there's like one sentence, international human rights groups say that hundreds of civilians have been killed. Well, they don't just say that, they document it with their names, you know. But, and, and, and then they go to the important authoritative figures uh, speaking from the pulpit saying, no, not true, and, you know, we don't kill civilians. Uh, and then they go to the, to the pseudo-critic guy saying, you know, informing us that, well, the truth must lie somewhere in between, you know. And, and you know, not a single voice of a victim or a survivor of a family member, and the footage is widely available, including testimony before Congress, not a single image or footage of a body being blown to bits. Uh, you know, the Air Force gave them the footage it wanted of buildings and cars being blown up, but not bodies, you know. Um, not a single uh, glance at the question of whether it's legal to murder people. Uh, not uh, a single reference, well, maybe a half a sentence, but no reference to the available facts uh, on the fact that it's counterproductive. You know, they have Brennan admit that, the, that during the course of the global war on terrorism, there are now more terrorists. But the, the causal connection that numerous experts will point to is just brushed over as, you know, therefore, we must do more global war on terrorism. And, you know, the, the top experts from the U.S. military and, and the so-called intelligence, so-called community, the minute they retire, who blurt out that it's counterproductive, that they're producing more enemies than they're killing, it's, I've got a, a, a web page with dozens of them and their quotes, and they, many of them would have been happy to be interviewed, I am sure, right? But this was a CIA program with John Brennan getting the last word and getting the refutation of anything remotely negative. And the, you know, the, the so-called journalist waving around a kill list and bragging and wanting us to cheer with him that half of them have been, have been killed. And they show scary, scary footage of this distant, fuzzy guy who they say was Osama bin Laden uh, before 2001, shot from a drone that wasn't armed because we weren't smart enough to arm them back then. The implication being that if they had armed the drone and blown up this guy and the other guys near him and who cares about them, then 9-11 wouldn't have happened and those thousands of deaths wouldn't have happened. I don't know about the millions of deaths that use 9-11 as an excuse to you know, go around the world and destroy countries and kill millions of people would have happened because they could have marketed those with something else. But you know, this was the implication, which is just torn apart by their own report because later the same so-called journalist is bragging that among the dead are seven, count them, seven replacements for Osama bin Laden who were going to take his place. You know? And, and, and this cartoonish idea that this mastermind evil criminal was, you know, the entirety of an entire region of the globe that was filled with bitterness and hatred toward the United States. And if they'd blown him up, they wouldn't have just made his allies more angry, that they would have somehow prevented anti-American terrorism by blowing up another guy, when they've been blowing up another guy and another guy and another guy for all these years and getting more and more terrorists. And finally, wait until that guy was old and debilitated and disabled and unarmed and unguarded in a house in Pakistan and went in and shot him and lied about it. Uh, a guy who was not running a terrorist organization anymore, you know, and, and, and lied about, you know, having slain the evil dragon to have a nice photo op at the White House. But then it makes it into the movies, right? And it makes it in with the lie that torture works. Because, they also, because the president also lied about and burned the actual sources and lied about how they found out where bin Laden was. And then you get these claims that torture works. You know, so, uh, what in the world did I start on? Um, <laughs> they lie on anyway, horrible, horrible propaganda. Not nearly as bad as this movie out there called Eye in the Sky, but purporting to be news, you know, purporting to be journalism, pretending to be balanced and fair. And, for anyone who doesn't know that it isn't true that, as Brennan says, and nobody contradicts him, uh, that they never kill anybody they could capture instead, you know, 
But there's numerous cases where someone was, you know, at a public meeting on the street with a police station, and instead they waited until he went off in the country and they blew him up. There's a guy weeks back who went from Pakistan to London and said they've tried to blow me up four times. I sleep outside far from my house now for my family's safety in case they blow me up. Please take me off the list. Did they arrest him? No. Uh, you know, we don't know a single case where they actually couldn't arrest somebody. People who don't know that you know, everybody targeted with a drone missile uh, isn't in ISIS. That in fact the vast majority of the people aren't targeted at all, and those who are aren't known by name. Uh, you know, the, the majority are civilians by every definition. Are going to believe the stuff that MSN, that uh, NBC tells them, right? And the the people who don't know that these evil doers who are being blown up aren't what, the, what Obama calls imminent and continuing threats to the United States, which doesn't even exist in logic, but it also, you know, no imminent threat from any of them exists uh, in any actual real world case. I mean, the closest you get is that fictional movie, Eye in the Sky, where they meet all of these criteria except threat to the United States. They're actually threat to some people in Africa. Uh, but it's fiction. You know, made with Pentagon collaboration, and you ask the director, and he says, no, of course, there's nothing real in it, but there could be. There could be, possibly, someday. But it's what the public, if the public thinks at all is happening with the drones, it's what they think is happening. So they're getting a completely fictional story from movies and from news, you know. Uh, so do what you're doing. Don't watch NBC. Uh, but be aware. What's in your neighbor's heads? What's in your neighbor's minds? That when you go and, and protest drone murders and hand out flyers and they say, oh no, no, I prefer drone wars to other wars because with drone wars nobody gets killed. You know, know, know what it is they're thinking. Know what's been stuck between their ears so that you can speak with them and enlighten them and move them uh, to the understanding that it is incredibly dangerous to have normalized war in this way. That you have a UN special rapporteur saying war has now become the norm. And that's okay, I don't mind, you know, because I'm uh, Tony Blair's wife's lawyer and I've got a nice career. But, you know, if, if, if you're gonna have wars that the president just decides on, without the public, without the Congress, without the UN, and you're gonna have a list of men, women, and children gone through on Tuesdays and people blown up, including the U.S. citizens that John Brennan says that all of the murders are to protect. You know, some, some of the murders are of U.S. citizens, including U.S. children, targeted and blown up with their cousins and friends who are sitting too close to them. And it wasn't with a knife, so it wasn't evil, but if you imagine that the young man's head stayed on his body, you don't understand how these weapons work. Right? To have normalized this and just brush it aside, and, and you know, the, 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 the incredible outrage that's being organized in the public and in Congress over the possibility of things that Donald Trump might do. Now, when he doesn't hold any public office, you know, and there's not been resistance to what Obama does, and has been accepted and made normal. This, this is very dangerous. How, raise your hand if you can name the seven countries President Obama has bragged about heavily bombing. Somebody in the very back? No? If, if we sit here long enough, very likely one of you can, or as a group, we can pool our information and we can get it. My point is they didn't have this problem in the Roman Empire. They didn't have it in the Soviet Union. They don't have it in France. They don't have it in Mexico. Never before in the history of the world has a people been unable to keep track of its wars. Never before in the history of the world have you had a presidential or any elected official debate on television or any other format in public where a moderator has asked a candidate, are you willing to kill thousands of innocent children as part of your basic duty if elected? You know, never before have you had basketball games like the one we'll have this evening where they'll thank the troops for watching in 175 countries. You know,